Silver Dollar City is probably one of the best parks in the country, if not the world. Um, I am lucky enough to have it as my home park, um, and today I want to talk about all the different aspects of the park, what you should know before you go, what you should definitely plan on doing, what you should maybe avoid, um, and just some of that stuff. So without further ado, let's talk about Silver Dollar City. So Silver Dollar City is located in the Ozark Mountains, and the setting is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, but when you first arrive at the park, you take a tram, and then that'll take you to the park entrance. And you're greeted by some old-timey buildings and a big Silver Dollar City logo. That's a photo op. Um, and then you walk through, and then you go through the turnstiles, and you're inside the park. Now, um, you're kind of just on this little path that's surrounded by trees on either side. And there's a bakery up on the left, which smells absolutely amazing. Uh, marketing geniuses came up with that. Um, and then you walk through the gift shop, and then you're in the park. And once you're in the park, you're fully immersed. Um, it is just 1800s detail all around you, and it's super cool. But inside that gift shop is actually the entrance to the cave that the park was built on. Um, so there's an old cave called Marvel Cave. You can tour it, but it's closed currently because of COVID, which is a real shame. But the rest of the park is just absolutely phenomenal. And the cave is, I would say, definitely a part of the park and something that you don't want to miss. So in the entrance plaza, um, you're surrounded by buildings on all sides. And if you walk straight to the left at first, you'll see some buildings that are authentic from the time period. There's also a petting zoo over there that a lot of people don't know about. Um, if you're looking to get away from the crowds, that is a great place to go. They also have a chapel there that holds actual um, worship services, which is really cool to see. Um, but then... From that main path, there's a gazebo in the middle, and then there's two paths that kind of split off and take you to the majority of the park. If you take it towards the right, you'll end up towards Time Traveler and Thunderation, and since Time Traveler's a new ride, that side of the park can get pretty heavy in the mornings. Um, so if you go to the left, then you'll actually be heading towards Wildfire and Powder Keg in that direction. Um, and so a lot of the times, that's what I'll do is I'll go to the left just because I'll avoid the crowd's better that way um, and get some morning rides in on wildfire um, and now let's talk about the coasters so there's seven coasters at the park um, one of them's a kitty coaster one of them is an indoor coaster which I'll talk about in a bit but let's talk about the coasters so Thunderation is a classic aero mine train um, it was the first big coaster that was built at the park and it is a great ride. Um, it's built right on the side of a mountain, so you literally start the ride just out of the station, rolling out, um, and there's a big spiral and followed by a tunnel, which is super fun. Um, this is probably a good intro to some of the bigger coasters in the park. Um, I just think it's a great ride. Um, it's a little rough, but if you can look past the roughness, the layout is actually really good, and it's a just super fun ride, something that you won't want to miss. Now, let's talk about Powder Cake. Now, this ride used to be an old water ride, um, but that was shut down, and it got turned into a launch coaster. Now, this coaster is super unique. Um, it features... A compressed air launch, which is one of the only ones in the country. Um, the other one, I think, is at max force. But the ride starts off with a transfer track up to the launch, and then you have that intense launch because it's compressed air. And that's followed immediately by a big top hat that gives some pretty nice air time. And then the rest of the ride is a lot of just over banks. Um, it's similar to a hyper coaster like maybe Millennium Force in its layout, except on a lot smaller of a scale, and it also features a launch. Um, and then halfway through the ride, it does feature a chain lift, which was left over from the old uh, water coaster that used to be there. I do wish that after the lift hill, there would be more to the ride, because it's about the same height as the first top hat, um, but it's just really short after that. But the ride is super fun. Um, it is closed a lot because of the weather. Um, if there's any moisture on the track, they will not run the ride. So that is something to keep in mind if you're wanting to get this. I mean, obviously you want to try and go on a dry day, 
but um, just know that if it is raining, they will not be running the ride at all. And one last thing I'll mention about this ride is that the queue honestly kind of sucks. I mean, there's good theming, but for some reason that station and the queue itself are not good at holding people. Um, so you'll often see the line out the door for that ride, which um, it just is what it is. Um, and then even in the station, like, there's not a good way to go find the row that you'll be in and try and like match up with the rest of the party. It just doesn't work very well for that. And now let's talk about Wildfire. So this is the park's B&M looping coasters, their sit down coaster. And this ride is really, really fun. Um, it is the most picturesque ride in the park without a question. It is sitting right on the top of the mountain with just amazing views of the Ozarks in the background. So the most picturesque coaster and the ride itself is really fun. Um, so you start off with an Immelman and go into a vertical loop followed by a Cobra roll and that'll take you into a uh, zero G roll and with a helix into the brake run. Um, there's not anything too special about this coaster other than its setting um, and it is just a gorgeous coaster. One thing for me personally is I think I prefer this ride in the morning when it isn't fully fast um, just because on some of those inversions you'll get some nice hang time as it slowly creeps over those inversions. So I think I prefer this ride in earlier in the day um, so it's also nice when you first get to the park take that left and go straight to wildfire so that way you can get those slower rides and experience that hang time on the ride um, it is also great at night I've done that many times and now we're at the top two rides at the park um, so I will talk about time traveler first time traveler is their newest coaster and it is a mock extreme spinning coaster um, so this ride is absolutely just crazy. So you start with a vertical drop out of the station. Um, you go through a dive loop, a vertical loop, a zero G roll, and um, two launches. But the kicker is all of this is done while spinning. Um, it's not a free spin coaster. They do control how fast you spin. So um, if you have troubles with like spinning like I know my dad does. Um, he didn't mind this coaster too much just because they control how much you spin. And honestly you don't really notice the spinning a whole lot. It's more like you're, it's just a change in scenery, a change at what you're looking at. And it's enjoyable and it's super rewritable just because you'll be facing a different direction each time you ride it and the ride experience will be new. Um, I do think there should be more after the second launch, but the, if you take the ride for what it is, it is a great ride. Um, I seem to love this ride more and more each time I ride it. And the last ride I'll talk about is Outlaw Run. In my opinion, this is the best ride in the park, um, and it's controversial between that or Time Traveler. I personally prefer this, but um, the ride is absolutely insane. It was built by Rocky Mountain Construction. It was their first ground up wooden coaster. Um, it was the first coaster to feature their own trains. Um, but even just the ride itself is absolutely amazing. Um, it features loads of airtime, crazy inversions, um, and the finale of the double barrel roll is just absolutely insane. I was lucky enough to ride this in its opening year when it was super smooth. It was like butter. And all I remember is just holding onto my lap bar, and when I got off, I had no idea what was going on. Um, I honestly didn't think we were going to make it through that second barrel roll up to the station. I thought we were going to valley out, but we did make it. Um, and this ride is just super fun, super fast. It gives great night rides because it's almost all secluded, and it is something that you will not want to miss. Um, I think it's the best ride in the park, but... I did mention that it was super smooth when it opened. It is a little bit rough. Um, I can only do this ride a few times before I start to get a headache. So that's something to bear in mind. Now with the coasters out of the way, there's a few other rides that I want to talk about that I think are do not miss attractions. Um, the first one I'll start with is the train. Now this is just a classic train ride. It takes you around the park. Um, and there's a lot of places in the park that you can see the train, which is super cool. But then it also ventures off into the woods. 
And what's cool about this train ride is that there's actually a show partway through. Um, and that's one thing you'll notice with the park is that there are shows everywhere, but the train ride itself features a show. Um, and at Christmas, they do a Christmas sing-along and there's Christmas lights all around. It's something that you won't want to miss. And right next to the train is a ride called the Flooded Mine. Um, this is an indoor shooting ride. Um, it's actually a boat ride, which I it's the only one that I've ever seen like that. Um, and it's just a fun ride. If you're looking for a good attraction to get out of the heat, maybe in the summer, um, this ride will do it. Um, be, just because it's all inside, it's pretty old. You'll you'll notice a lot of the animatronics don't work or whatever, but it's just a fun ride. Um, it's a cool theme. But if you're looking to get out of the heat on a hot summer's day, um, the ride I would recommend most is uh, Tom and Huck's River Blast. Now this is a water shooting ride where you actually shoot water instead of like on Flooded Mine where you're just shooting targets. Um, if you ride this ride, you will get absolutely soaked from head to toe, no questions about it. Um, so that's a great way to cool off on a hot summer's day. Um, and Right across the street is their newest ride, Mystic River Falls. Now this is a really fun raft ride. Um, it features an amazing drop, an elevator lift hill that you spin around, um, which is just super cool. Um, and then a big drop. Um, this is a fun ride all around. Um, I'm a big fan of raft rides just because they're super intimate. You look at everyone and you feel like you're all in this together and they're super unpredictable so i love raft rides and this one is definitely an amazing raft ride um probably the best in the country i haven't ridden that many but i am confident in saying that it's the best and the other water ride in the park is the american plunge this is an old log flume um super fun just all around um Kind of a long winding layout through the Ozark Mountains. Um, it's near Wildfire, but the ride itself is just pretty fun. The drop is pretty fun. Um, you can get wet depending on where you sit in the log, but um, that's a fun ride. And those are all of the water coasters at the park. And I talked earlier about the Flooded Mine, which is a dark ride. And at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that there was seven coasters. Um, one of them is a kiddie coaster, and the other one is a dark ride. That's Fire in the Hole. This ride is super fun. Um, it features a lot of animatronics and just weird practical effects. Um, but it does feature drops, therefore qualifying it as a roller coaster. But it's... a uh, indoor roller coaster but it's mostly just a dark ride um and it depicts the bald knobbers burning down the town which is um based on historical events in the ozarks which is super cool super cool that they would pay homage to the land that they sit on and what's cool about this ride is that it was built in-house by the park um they built this roller coaster themselves um and it does feature a splashdown ending which is super fun a bit of a surprise and yeah, if you're on a hot summer's day, it's a nice way to cool off, honestly. I want to talk briefly about the shows and festivals, because this is one of the things that sets this park apart from so many other parks in the country. This park has amazing festivals all year round, um, and two of my p favorites are Pumpkin Nights and Christmas. So Pumpkin Nights is pretty new, um, and it is just a bunch of pumpkin sculptures everywhere. They have like a pumpkin dance party and a pumpkin trail that you can walk down. Um, pumpkin sculptures everywhere. Super, super fun. Um, I think it is amazing and definitely on par with their Christmas event. And their Christmas event is has always been a classic. Um, they feature some of the most lights of any park in the country, um, especially an old town Christmas. Um, if you go right in the middle of the square, um, there's just lights everywhere and they have a tree that will dance to the music um, with the Christmas lights and all the surrounding buildings. And there are just lights on every inch of those buildings. Um, they don't even have like any street lights over there just because the Christmas lights are enough light. It is truly something incredible and something you will not want to miss when you come to the park. Um, try your best to go at either fall or winter because those two times are truly something incredible and something that you should witness. And the last thing I'll talk about is the food because the food is phenomenal. 
Um, a lot of the theme parks, you don't go for the food. This is a park that a lot of people do go for the food, just because the food is so good. Um, it is amazing. Wherever you go to eat, you will find a good meal. It doesn't matter where. Um, my personal favorite is Percy's Mexican Grill. Um, this is a bit like Chipotle, where you make your own thing. It is just amazing food. Um, it's my favorite. You can find it up near the square at the front of the park. And one of the snacks that you won't want to miss out on in the park is the cinnamon bread. Um, they just built a new building for it, so now it's by the new raft ride. But this cinnamon bread is phenomenal. So my overall thoughts on the park? If you can't tell, they're really, really good. This is my home park, so I'm a bit biased towards it, but man, do I love this park. Um, one more thing I'll say is interesting about it is you actually have to exit through a gift shop which is genius on their part because they'll sell more merchandise but mean when you're trying to go home after a long day because you have to walk through a gift shop just to get to the parking lot but the park is amazing and in my opinion is the best park in the country just with the coaster lineup and the theming everywhere and the shows and attractions there is so much to do at this park for people of all ages um, even the older people that can't ride the roller coasters anymore, they can go and enjoy the shows. And the kids that are too young to ride the roller coasters, they have kids' areas. This park is meant for everyone, and that is something that I love about it. And there's just theming everywhere. It is, in my opinion, the best park in the country. So I would love to know, what's your opinion on the park? Um, have you been before? What do you look forward to most? Thank you for watching, and God bless.